Oh, good evening to the study. Here we are. 2023. My, my, my. A year has gone. A new one is here, huh, guys? I know it. Oh, hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> Can you believe that it's already been a year? Um, I started, the, the study started, um, I believe, uh, almost, just maybe like almost a whole year ago. Um, yeah. I can't remember the exact, the very exact date that I started, but I, I believe it was in January of last year when, when, uh, when we started the study. <clears throat> My goodness, time flies. Hi, John. My brother John, how you doing? I. Uh, You know, I was just thinking about uh, just a little bit, not a whole lot, but I was thinking about all of uh, all of last year and and uh, you know how the study started out and kind of how it's taken it's sort of taken its own uh, <clears throat> you know its own shape. It's um, it's really quite humbling. Uh, you know, to be honest, I, I really didn't think that uh, that this would have gone on for for you know for for a year. You know, to be to be honest, I, I really didn't. Uh, hi, Deidre. It's good to see that you're here. Love you, miss you. It's so awesome to put 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 these arms around you and give you a big hug at the retreat. I'm so glad you're here. <clears throat> I hope everybody's uh, New Year's was was good. Ours was uh, pretty relaxing. We stayed home and uh, watched movies and TV shows. Anybody else watching Jack Ryan out there by chance? <clears throat> it's such a great show. It's so much fun. It's like CIA and action and it's pretty good hey Wesley it's so good to see you it was great hanging out with you yesterday <clears throat> but uh, you know really like um, I I uh, sincerely like I, I really wasn't sure you know what what was to come of uh, the study uh, when I first started it matter of fact if you if you read the my very first uh, post I guess about the study just a, an introductory as to like who I am and and what to expect from me in there I'd said hey I really don't know what the long long-term game is and I guess I, I still really don't know but <clears throat> I'm just amazed that it's it's gone on for a year. <laughs> so, anyways. Hey, well, I I think I've got some uh I think I've got some interesting things to to share with you, some talk about um and that, as you know, the the life the the life portion is kind of it's okay, you know, it's it's fine. I the the thing that maybe you don't you may not realize is that I'm just seeing myself. I'm talking to myself, and uh, I've I've noticed that that's sort of um, it's kind of a challenge um, because you you don't get to interact with with uh, people like you don't get to see people's um, expressions. Uh, you, you don't really get to see into into people's eyes and to see if they're you know maybe if you're like really like gelling with with what I'm saying or or not or or whatever you know 
Um, the nice thing is, is that it's recorded and anybody can, you know, catch up at a later time when it's more convenient. Yeah, I mean, you're basically just, you're a talking head, exactly. And I'm, uh, you know, if you were to talk to my wife, um, she would probably tell you that I, I live in my head. And so the, you know, the, the attempt to <laughs> try to carry on a conversation with what feels like myself is really hard. Um, it, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't come naturally to me, you know, but as I've, as the year has gone by, um, I've, I've noticed that I've, I'm getting a little more comfortable with myself, you know, a little bit more comfortable with, with just talking. Um, but nonetheless, it's, it doesn't come easy to me. You should know. Uh, yeah, I mean, Wesley will tell you we, when we sit down and talk or, or there's other people around the table, I'm, I'm usually the guy that's listening. Um, I'm not really the one to take the spotlight. Um, uh, I'm just not, I never have been, you know, but, um, I, I really enjoy the, the relationship part of it. Um, the, like in the conversation, you know, whether it's here or, you know, at a brewery or at a restaurant or in someone else's home, um, I'm usually the one listening. Um, I, I enjoy it because it, it, you learn a lot. You learn a lot by just listening, you know? And mostly good things, right? You, you like, you get a, a better understanding of where people are coming from and, uh, you know, maybe what they're going through, <clears throat> uh, where they're headed, you know, and so on. So, but uh, anyways, happy birthday to the study, I guess, if that's okay. Uh, I, I think it was, it might have been last Thursday or maybe it was this Thursday, it's this Thursday that we completed a year. I'll have to go back and look, but, um, you know, also like, you know, you guys, you guys are so awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly humbled <laughs> that you guys uh, hung out, you know, that you guys hung, hung out with me through, through it the whole year. Like, I, I swear, I I, I often like would get done with the teaching on a Thursday, on a Thursday night, you know, and one, and I do, and I wonder, I was like, ah, oh, I wonder if, uh, <laughs> I wonder if what I said had, uh, any, any value or, or if it meant anything or gosh, I hope I don't say something that really just throws people off the rails, you know, like, I, I it's not. You know, that's not who I am. But at the same time, like I, I do want, I want us, I want us to have, you know, some uh, moments of, of reflection and, and think, oh, gee, you know, I never thought about it that way. Maybe, maybe this might be worth, you know, considering or, or chewing, chewing on it. Um, you know, so anyways, <clears throat> there you, there you go. That's the intro. Ah, uh, so where to begin? Um, you know, the last, the last time I got on here, um, we were, I've been kind of in, in first Peter and, uh, yeah. Oh, I just saw that Aubrey pays us. Nice. Dang. No wonder. I mean, that's where the money's going, right? But any, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, first, you know, first Peter has been, has been uh, on my heart and, uh, just been sort of camping out, um, uh, in first Peter and I've been bouncing around, you know, other places in, uh, in scripture. Uh, but I've been, I've been wanting to stay true to, to first Peter. I, I don't know why in many, in many ways it, it almost <clears throat> it almost um, um, 
I guess yeah, contradict is not the word that I'm looking for. It's it's more of a, like, I feel like I'm wanting to, to like, articulate a thought, but it's, maybe it's just not First Peter, you know? But I'm, I guess I'm a little, I'm stubborn enough to, I wonder if I could make it work in first Peter and so I'll stay I'll stay in it <clears throat> and try and keep reading until I I guess land on on something that's like ah okay there it is you know hopefully but that I think that's what I'm gonna try and do uh, with you guys <clears throat> and uh, so but here's the verse in uh, and it's in first Peter chapter 2 and it's verse number uh, 15. And uh, this is the, uh, the Christian Standard Bible. Uh, not that it's, you know, the best one out there or the worst one out there. It's just one of the ones that I have <clears throat> uh, on here, or here in the RV. Uh, and here's what it says. Uh, it says, for it is God's will that you silence the ignorance of the foolish people by doing good. <clears throat> now I can't help but wonder, I wonder where your mind went when I read that verse. I wonder if it was a lot like mine. When, when, I, when I read that verse, I immediately went into defense mode. I, I read the word ignorance under a, a very negative, under a negative context. Did anybody else, anybody else uh, resonate with that? It is God's will for it is God's will that you silence the ignorance of the foolish people by doing good. Yeah. I immediately went into this, uh, like this old West, this just this really like a, I guess like, I don't know what else, it's us for um, it's, uh, you know, yeah, us versus them. It's, uh, I'm right. Uh, you were wrong. Um, you know, this, this, uh, separation, um, thoughts is what bombarded my mind. Um, uh, you know, oh, it's, uh, 15, 15. First, first Peter chapter two verse 15 and uh, <clears throat> you know so so that's where my mind went but I think I, I have something you know that I, I would I would like to consider I would like for you to consider to think about if you're willing and uh, I, I would ask you to to just kind of join me in in your imagination I guess <clears throat> um, You know, I, I, I suppose, you know, maybe one morning, um, in any, any given day of the week, maybe it's a dreaded Monday and you wake up and you, 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 you do your morning routine, uh, whatever that is, maybe you have coffee and breakfast or maybe the the first thing you do is you maybe you check your mail in the morning I mean I don't know or you get the newspaper and uh, oh, after your routine and you go outside you open the door <clears throat> maybe like I said you're getting your newspaper you happen to you happen to look down and alongside your newspaper um, you see you see like an envelope there oh, it's kind of unusual you know 
uh, you weren't expecting it and uh, you're immediately struck with curiosity it's addressed to you but uh, you're not really quite sure who sent it so anyways you pick it up and you you go inside and well you you open up the envelope and you take the card out and uh, you begin to read and you you realize that the envelope um, inside the envelope in that little card there's a, a written uh, declaration you you realize that within that declaration there's an invitation as well and <clears throat> I mean something happens right like in, in your heart in your mind when when you when you're reading something like that that was so unexpected it's probably one of the most euphoric sensations you could possibly ever truly desire something like <clears throat> you know some some of you are like puppy lovers you know and maybe or kittens it'd be like puppies and kittens you know rushing you bum rushing you uh just wanting to adore you for absolutely no reason okay it's it's one of those like one of those feelings one of the the best warm fuzzy feelings you could you could ever think of <clears throat> it's unexpected um, there's no rhyme or reason for it to be there you just one morning you woke you woke up and it was there but it also leaves you <clears throat> scratching your head you know you're wondering you're wondering why why me why why is this here what did i do to deserve this declaration slash invitation envelope this little card but the sensation still of of knowing that someone someone out there took time out of out of their day to think about you is is a feeling that that we all crave it's it's a it's a sensation that matches no, none other because it's it's something that comes from the heart and especially if you know that you didn't deserve it if you know that there's absolutely no reason for this envelope to land on your you know on your doorstep you know there's no strings attached there's no obligations and you know that it's a it's the most heartfelt gesture of this like shock this this it's this explosion of bliss that overwhelms us And I, I think that the that the reason why this this is so interesting to to pay attention to because it when when something like that happens it it's like a gravitational pull. Um, it, it's it's because it's the connection that we're all looking for, and it, it's to connect. It's to be desired, to be loved, to be accepted. It's what we all crave for. I mean, really. We all, all of us, every single one of us, craves to be a part of something. 
craves to have a relationship with someone, somebody that we can share life with, uh, someone that, I don't know, sees your dirty laundry on the, on the floor. I don't have any dirty laundry on the floor ever. Only clean ones. You know, this is, it's like a, this is a force that, that honestly is just not, you can't reckon with it. Um, you, you honestly, you can't even reason with, with that kind of deep connection that, that we yearn for. It pulls us in. Now, <clears throat> I know I said invitation and uh, declaration. And uh, I will say this, that, um, and I think, I think many, uh, I think my pastors would agree, first and foremost, that the declaration, that the gospel, excuse me, the gospel is first and foremost a declaration. Hands down. <clears throat> and, but it's also true that it is an invitation. But it's only an invitation in the fact that it follows the declaration. Okay? The things that have already taken place. And, and it's not a commodity. It's, uh, it's not something that we bargain for. It's not a deal you broker. It's not, uh, the invitation is not the right prayer or the wrong one. It's not words, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's not a, it's not poetry. It's, it's the invitation is the best way to say it is that it's a pronoun it's it's a noun it's a person you see and that's we got to keep that i think dead center in this understand understanding this keep it dead center that Christ is the invitation i said it <clears throat> And even, and although I say that, the invitation is to participate in a relationship and you know what? It's a persistent one. It is that, you know, the time again and again, you know, no matter how many milestones or how many junctures you come to in your life, that declaration and that invitation stays annoyingly and pleasantly consistent. And the annoyingly or the, ple the, the pleasantly really is, do you believe me or not? It's annoying if you don't. It's blissful if you do. And so then, you know, the, the, maybe, maybe a few days go by, maybe, maybe months go by, <clears throat> maybe years go by, maybe several decades go by. One day, you hear a knock. You hear a knock and you hear the messenger on the other side of the door asking the question, are you coming to the party? Whether we like it or not, that messenger outside your door inquires about your acknowledgement. 
you hear me? You don't get a say in the matter. Because he's going to be there whether you like it or not. I would imagine that, like most of us, if not all of us, we all probably, are, at least our initial response is somewhat of insecurity. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe at first you may have politely declined. I mean, I'm just being honest. Come on, right? <laughs> I think, you know, I think that, uh, I don't know about you, but I remember, you know, <clears throat> as a, as a kid, if you went to Sunday school, um, well, and maybe maybe not just as a kid, but maybe maybe if you like just recently discovered this envelope, you recently just read this envelope, this story, this love story. Sorry, guys. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're, you know, in your mid thirties or your late eighties, or maybe you're ninety-five. I don't know. And you just read this story. You just read this, this envelope. And you probably would reason with yourself that, man, I, I can't believe these. Pharisees did what they did. How could they not know? How? How is it possible that the creator of the world shows up and they can't recognize him? And uh, I tell you what, like I, I, reason, I would reason with myself thinking, you know, man, if I was there, if I was in their shoes, there's no way I would deny him. But yet, it's just simply not true because at the end of the day, we all denied him. And the reason why we didn't recognize that man is because he looked a lot like you. He had, he had skin, you know, he had hair, he had a beard maybe, probably. <clears throat> he sweat, he had to use the restroom. He was quite normal. Um, it's dangerous when we try to reason. When we try to reason, I would like to humbly propose that you have not accepted your death in Christ. And you have not accepted that he is the resurrection and the life. Anyways, think about that. You know, you might also even think, why now? You know, why, why would he care to show up now? You know, like, <clears throat> why not then, you know, when I needed a friend most? He could have been bald. He, he might have just had like a couple saints, you know, up here. I don't know. <clears throat> um, but, you know, honestly, like, you know, um, you know, why would he care to show up? Why would he care if I showed up? Or not. And yet, you still hear knock, knock.
You know, your table, your table's been prepared. And I've been instructed to only accept a yes from you, says the messenger. Let us go. There's too much to see along the way. Come on, I mean, this is it. This is the gospel. Is it not? <laughs> the gospel is the good news that every, that's, he, he did it. I often, uh, you know, when, when I talk to people uh, that are, uh, you know, interested in, in what I'm doing or, or where, what I'm up to or whatever, you know, um, I'll let them know, like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm in Bandera because I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just wanting to learn more. And so I'm, I'm very much studying theology, but in a very uncredited way you know, way, and, um, and, you know, you get, you get some, like, what, really, like, you're, you're wanting to study theology, and you're a bartender, you're serving beer to people, and, uh, it always surprises them, uh, for the most part, and, um, the ones, and to the ones who ask, sometimes we'll get into a conversation of, um, you know what? What is it that you believe? They'll they'll ask, and so I'll tell them. And uh, one of my favorite things to say to them is, is that I'm not I'm I'm not concerned about your salvation. I'm concerned about whether or not you believe or not. And that usually they take a step back, and that opens up, you know, a conversation. I'm, I'm not there to transform them. I'm not there to persuade them um, or to, you know, twist their arm or something like that. I'm there to share. I'm there to share the gospel by serving beer at the moment. I don't know. That's probably, that could be bad theology. But the truth of the matter is, is that when, when we see... When we see Christ, when you realize that you didn't recognize him because he looked a lot like yourself, it means that in the light of his in light of his son, you see so much of yourself. It's it's the reflection that you see that's hard to believe. And it's that belongingness. Uh, listen, like it's belonging. That belongingness is the fountain uh, that we come from. It's the fountain that we sacramentally express. And this is the drink that he gives that satisfies us. That's the drink that we crave. We crave to belong. You belong because you crave. You see, so often, you know, we think he... He shares because we ask, but no, I mean, he, because it's, it's that he, it's because he is the provider is why we ask. <clears throat> and if you, if you're willing to accept that he became flesh, not because you prayed, but he be, you pray because he became flesh. at least in a very genuine way and not in a way of trying to convince him to do something on your behalf but in such a way that you understand that you're seated in the heavenly places <clears throat> see we have to you have to see that perfection indeed came in the flesh human like you like me and you have to also understand that Christ is both the messenger and the answer to that declaration he's the image and he is the reasonableness of the father 
That's why he's the word become flesh. He is he is reason. He is the reason. The reasoning. Is when you read scripture and if you if you interpret Christ to be something different other than the Father, you've created Christ to be an idol of yourself. Come on, man, you gotta hear this. There is so much freedom when you give him all the glory. It's this is what I'm pushing. I'm pushing that he to him be all the glory. Give him all the credit. He's the, he's also, he's the final amen. So you hear, knock, knock again. And guess what? The word will not return empty handed. He's not going to be made a mockery of, and you've heard me say this before, possibly, if, if you've been around for a little while, you've heard me say that. <clears throat> okay. Let's, let's wrap this up, right? Um, let me reread that scripture again because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and tie this up and then we'll hang out. <clears throat> All right, first, uh, 15, okay? First, first Peter chapter 2, verse 15. For it is God's will that you silence the ignorance, that you silence the ignorance of the foolish people by doing good. <clears throat> the only good you bring to the table, the only good that you can bring to him is your death. <laughs> hang on. I'll, I'll, hang on. The only, listen, the only good that you can bring to the table is your death because he is life. He is the life. And because he is the resurrection. Are you catching this? The only good that you can bring to the table is your death because he is the resurrection and he is life. He's not going to do anything with you. He, he can't. He won't. He raises the dead. Plain and simple. He didn't come to heal the ones that didn't need a physician. Right? He came to heal the sick. Came to raise the dead. The only good that you can bring to the table is your death because life and resurrection happens precisely because we died in Christ. He is life. He is resurrection. He is truth. So ignorance, listen, in this verse, ignorance is not a negative. It's not a put down, okay? It's simply just not knowing it's not knowing that the envelope is sitting at your front doorstep come on like it's not that we're taking a 40 grit sandpaper to someone's face and and <laughs> sanding it down with you know all of the humanitarian efforts and splashing it on their face that's not what doing good is this for i mean would you would you blame a little a little baby for not knowing that no of course not man he's a it's a baby it doesn't know any better so then why would you blame or be angry with the ones who still haven't seen the glory of god I mean, listen, like I'm trying, I'm swallowing this pill myself. I'm preaching to myself here. I need to hear it. Right? I need to hear it. We all do. We all need to be continuously reminded, you know, that 
We didn't do anything for this. Nor can we add anything to it except for accepting we are dead and resurrected and alive in Christ. That's the only say you get. You, your say is as if, as in like what Malcolm has taught is your sin. That is your qualification for the good news. Good job, bud. You're in. On the other hand, okay, I also want to make sure that you understand that we're not passive in demonstrating the raw love of God. We're absolutely not passive, okay? And, and we must, we all must, all of us, we must take a strong stand, you know, for what is right, okay? We don't take a stand for we take a stand for what is right. Every generation must. We all must. Okay? And we, we take a stand precisely in the witness of the glory of God, which is the revelation of Christ and Christ in you. So, sorry, it kind of blipped out on me there. Uh, but I think we're back. <clears throat> so we, we take a stand in the witness, okay? In the witness of the glory of God, which is the revelation of Christ in Christ in you. Yeah, the hope of glory. So I'll finish with this. The good we are is like the muzzle to those who have yet to discover the envelope that's been at the footstep of their door since before the beginning of time. My brothers, my sisters in the study, let them know that they have always belonged. That is it. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me here in the live session. And uh, hang out for just a minute. I'm going to open up a hangout session um, where we can see each other's faces and, uh, and hang out for a little while. <clears throat> so hang tight.